I'm going to go, oh, that's what they're talking about, that people. Oh, yeah, it can be a bit like that, but it's the truth. Hallelujah. You know, and it's in the canon. It's, Revelations is the final chapter of the book for a reason. You know, it's the end. And it shows it's the beginning for some of us. It's the beginning of that new life. It's the beginning of that that peace, that heaven that the God Bible talks about. It's the beginning of that that place where it talks about um, God makes all things new. Why? Because He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. Mm -hmm. He is the beginning and the end. So some of us at the, at the are at the beginning of our journey with Christ right now. And you know, the Bible says that He who started a good work in you will bring to completion. You know, we're all at different levels in our maturity in, in terms of our faith. But one of the things that we need to aspire to and we need to look to is moving from that place of spiritual immaturity into spiritual maturity and having wisdom and discernment. You know, we've got too many believers that are just hopping around all over the place, going from church to church, ministry to ministry, deliverance to deliverance, you know, because, you know, there is... That, le that there's not that level, you know, of discernment within the body of Christ, and it creates division. The, the Bible tells us very, very clearly that there should be no division amongst us. You know, that's what it says in the scripture. So if we're in a place where we're finding ourselves in division, we need to check ourselves, not the church or the pastor or, or the scripture. We need to check ourselves. You know, so it's really important when we're looking at this particular tractor, you know, it talks about past, present and future, um, which is which is what it talks about. The section pictures um, in 2119, the new Jerusalem descending out of heaven, hovering over the earth. You know, it talks about um, um, the holy city, the holy city of Jerusalem. The holy city is described as the bride, the wife of the lamb, which has 12 gates, uh, three on each side of the wall, bearing the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. And we talked about last week, the city measures 12,000 stadia in length, breadth, depth and height for around 1500 miles. Some visual uh, and some others see it as a pyramid with a top cut off, which allows for, I suppose, a broad public square. Uh, again, the city has 12 foundations on which it's written the names of the 12 apostles. And this is um, undoubtedly a reference to the fact that the foundations of the church were laid by the apostles and the prophets, as we saw in the New Testament, as they taught the doctrines of Christ, which we clearly see in Ephesians 2.20. The foundations were adorned with jewels, as we talked about, jewels similar to those in the breastplate of the oh. high priest. And the 12 gates of the 12 pearls, a reminder that everything about the city had gold, precious stones, pearls, speaks of glory and talks about the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. The glory, which is the bride, the bride that will share her beloved certain and the lamb that dwells in there is no sun there is no moon because the glory of god illuminates it hallelujah and the lamb is the lamp there are no closed gates because there is a perfect security with perfect access there is no night there is nothing unclean and only those that are in the lamb's book of life shall enter whose names are written in the lamb's book of life it talks about the river, the river of water, the river of water of life that flows from the throne of God and the lamb through the middle of the street. On the other side of the river grows the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, which we touched on, healing of the nations, which, which have just been through that tribulation pre period. The necessity of healing for the nation convinces many bible students that john here is speaking of the millennium and not the eternal state remember we talked about the difference between the two there shall be no more curse perfect sinlessness but the throne of god and the lamb shall be in it so the perfect perfect government will be established 
and his servants shall serve him with perfect service and they shall see his face. We touched on some of that yesterday uh, when we were talking about Psalms in death. One of the things that we want to look forward to, of course, is seeing his face. Hallelujah. That would be wonderful, wouldn't it? And his name shall be written on their foreheads. Hallelujah. In general, this is going to be a beautiful scene. When the church will reign with Christ, the reign will be forever and ever. Verse 5 because the millennium will merge into that eternal state and the earthly kingdom will give away the everlasting kingdom. And the interpreting angels reminds John of the truthfulness of all that have been present. So point um, 22, two, as John gazes on the new heaven and earth that God will someday create, we, he sees the tree of life that bears 12 kinds of fruit each month. This is what he's talking about here. Yeah. A tree that pro that is productive. So when we look at a tree that's productive, it gives us a little bit of a clue into our walk. Saved by grace to produce good fruit. Hallelujah. <laughs> in that particular order so when we look here it says a tree that's productive will give little rest to the workers who cultivate it and harvest its fruit so you, you know god is god is the uh, the organ grinder he's pruning us you know he's giving us revelation he's cutting off the old branches he's he's he's, 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 he's bringing us to a place into that deeper state of righteousness you know and 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 this is now. Hallelujah. For us as the believers, this is happening now. So, you, you, you know, yeah, listen, the grace message is beautiful. It's the most beautiful message that we can have. But I believe as believers, we have a relationship to cultivate in order for us to be pruned, in order for us to, to be in that place of revelation of the glory of God in us. It's important that we understand that, that the tree that's productive will give a little rest to the workers who cultivates it and that, and harvests its fruit. But those who tend the tree will surely be what? Happy. So it's the same right now. If we tend to uh, uh, you, you, the life that Christ has for us, you know, we will be happy. We won't be worried about tomorrow. We won't be anxious. We won't be fearful. We'll be happy in Christ because we'll know where we're going. Hallelujah. The, as, the, as the scripture says, do not worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will worry about itself. You know, and our eyes need to be fixed on him. Hallelujah. So I'm going to take some questions, comments. Uh, because your Bible study as well. So time for you to come in for, and we work with, we're trying to keep in it in, in those first five verses. Maxine. Hi, uh, Pastor. I just wanted to say that in my Bible, where it says about the gates, Amen. it says that, um, and he who talked with me had a golden reed and measured the gate. The city is laid out as a square, its length, and then it says that the um, is the it says the names are written on them, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. It's okay. not the twelve apostles. It's the twelve. It's the twelve um, tribes of the children of Israel. It's written on the gates. What? Um, where are you at? Where, where are you at? This is uh, the New Jerusalem. You know when you were saying. Um, bearing the names of the 12 tribes of Israel see Matthew 19 28 no it's Revelation okay so check, check your Bible Na Matthew 19 28 okay go to Matthew 19 28 I'll quickly go there for you we'll confirm one second Matthew 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 brilliant Maxine I like that boom 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 1928 says 
So Jesus said to them, Assuredly I said to you that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on the thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Thank you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Canon, canon, canon. Hope that cleared that one up for you. Thank you. You're welcome. God bless you. Hallelujah. Anybody else want to come in? Zoe, good to see your friend with you. Hello. Good to have you with us. God bless you. Gemma. Yeah, I just like I just like the um bit where it says it says on my Bible like Eden restored. And I just think it's just really powerful because we start at Eden, do you know what I mean? And and we now end at the restoration and like God is the God of reconciliation. So he's literally bringing back what he started a good work. Like there's so many scriptures about the goodness of starting and finishing and like all these things. And I just find it really powerful. And obviously it says, um, he showed me the river of water of life as clear as crystal. And obviously the water represents being born again and like a restart and a, 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 a new, do you know what I mean? And I just think it just feels like after such a traumatic book, like it does come with a bit of peace and a bit of like joy at the end rather than like just really ending on, um, yeah, just ending on a real negative note. Like it's, got that bit of positivity at the end where it's like hallelujah like we're gonna be restored even though Adam and Eve like ruined it for everyone and if it wasn't them someone else would have ruined it and we've all ruined it and God loves us so much that he is literally restoring things back to how they was originally meant to be and then um I don't think this was me that uh, circled this but I think it was probably you, Ivor. In verse seven, it says, "Look, I am coming soon," and it's got a big circle around it. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless you! Yeah, it's true. I, I, who, how many? Who goes to work? How many people find it mundane sometimes? Tired, weary, treacherous. Look at look at let's look at verse three, hey? Eh? Let's look at verse three. <laughs> because it shows that still we, we still might be doing some work. <laughs> but let's look at verse three. It says da, 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 verse three, verse three, verse three. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall sit, in, and his service and his servants shall serve him. So in that, the service and the work that we'll be doing will be. No, there, there won't be no labor laborers. There won't be no tiredness. It'll be full of joy. We won't have to worry about getting paid. We won't have to worry about worrying about our bills being met. We won't have to worry about, you know, electricity, cost of living crisis, you know, having to feed the kids. Do you know what I mean? Having to pay all the mortgage and all that sort of treacherous stuff that goes with it. We'll be in that place, in that place of, wow, you know, running around in, a, in, in the house of many rooms. All bills paid for, your electric and gas, do you know what I mean, all sorted out because there won't be no light under the light of God all over you. Isn't it a beautiful picture? <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Any more questions, comments before we move on? One to five, the river of life. It also <laughs> goes on to say, um, they will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. Amen. So, like, we're going to really stand out. Like, we stand out now, do you know what I mean? But it's going to be like, wow, Amen. they really stand out now. Amen. And I think this is where the lukewarm church is going to get left behind. 
it's like if you don't if you don't engage with what you're meant to be doing and being connected you're just you're going to get left behind and that for me is quite a scary thought because I can waver in and out and I'm like some days uh, then other days I'm like yeah Jesus hallelujah so like I want to be on fire all the time I want to have that energy all the time rather than being like oh gotta get on bible study do you know what I mean it shouldn't be like that it should be like yay bible study <laughs> now this now we've got to remember this was being foretold so let's go back to um if anybody wants to go to mark come in mark and whilst mark's coming in if someone wants to go to isaiah 65 verse 17 to 23 and if they could read that after mark isaiah 65 verse 17 to 23 come in mark well, best, yeah i was reading in my bible yeah see verse seven i like this it says um blessed blessed begins with the six and seven beatitudes of revelation and indeed those who pay attention to this book will be blessed the Lord has shown the things that must come to pass and things that his servants must pay attention to. The ultimate faith of the unbelievers and the beautiful glimpse to of eternity, which leaves all believers with an eagerness for the return of Jesus Christ. Amen. I think that's um that's a beautiful thing, you know. Excellent, Mark. Like it's bittersweet, obviously, but to to know, to sit and actually just not worry about um the things that have come to pass, to just be um, eager to to see Jesus's face as a is a blessing. I also think, obviously, we're not got into that chapter yet, but I also think there's a warning in that as well. When we when we pick up from six, six to to nine, it's a warning to us saying the time is near. Amen. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you know, and it's important that we understand that the time is near. So let's look at thanks, Mark. In fact, you can read that passage when we come back after Isaiah 65, 17 to 23. If you could pick that back up, that passage from verses 6 to 11, please. You got that, Mark? Yeah. Excellent. Has anybody got yeah, Isaiah? Has anybody got Isaiah? Yeah, I've got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, Isaiah where? Isaiah 65, 17 to 23. Oh, I haven't got that one. 65. You got it, Jonathan? Yeah, yeah. Fly away, Jonathan. Yeah. Isaiah 65, ESB, New Heavens and a New Earth. Uh, 17. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my, pa in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. No more shall be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the young man shall die a hundred years old, and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. Amen. Amen. How long is it? Sorry, when was it, it verse 23, I think you've covered okay. it. Yeah. So we should, yeah, I mean, when we look at how, how long Isaiah was writ, the dream lives on. You know, when we look at this, you know, um, the perfect world lives on for good reason, because it was good intentions for his creation, the Lord placed humankind in a flawless world and he promises to one day restore his creation to its original purpose and perfection, which is what we're seeing in uh, Revelation 22. 
for us here now in the meantime we live with a memory of what the garden of eden was that sinful nation right back in the beginning and a hope should be for what this new creation will be think about it you know we're looking at you know we're all sinners we all fall short of the glory of God. You know, uh, if we go into some of those deep Roman scriptures, you know, we're as dirty as our filthy rags. You know, when we look in how deep this really goes, when we look at the world, when we look at the state of this world at the moment, when we look at the condition of the world, where we look at mankind, where it's gone to, we can see, you know, God is coming to restore that. And we can see right the way in in this in what this new creation will be that god has kept this vision he's kept this vision alive with the occasional glimpse of the better reality for each and every single one of us with the hope that every person gets this or gets the opportunity to receive this such is the grace of our lord you know genesis describes eden as the perfect garden we're now we're looking in revelations as the perfect world the new heaven the new world you know we saw the perfect garden now in revelations future we're seeing the perfect world so we know that the law promised peace and prosperity right <laughs> back in leviticus and while it won't return to eden we can see it in the new promise psalms have showed us the fallen world and if we look at scripture we can see it, uh, that even though the lord's maintained this place where god rejoices in his handiwork he rejoices psalm 104 24 to 30 and we know that isaiah foresaw the new heaven and the new earth, and that was without weeping that was without sin that was without death that God's people will construct homes in a renewed, renewed Jerusalem and we will find satisfying work. You know, Paul looked forward to that creation being set free from the futility of God's people, from the bondage of corruption, from the bondage of evil. And we know that God's people will live in that perpetual place of hope, basing our, our lives on the promise. That's what we should be basing our lives on, on the promise that his purpose will never be extinguished by sin, by rebellion, by condemnation, things that we're seeing amongst believers today. We all fall short of God, but we're seeing condemnation, that we're seeing um, 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 devastation, we're seeing um, rebellion, we're seeing believers turning away. And we, um, but we need to look forward to that place that there is hope. There is hope in Christ. And although we live in that fallen world, we can certainly do our best to uphold a Christ-like living here on earth today, past, present and future, that we can uphold that Christ-like living through the gospel, through the scriptures, through Christ alone that sin us through the power of the Holy Spirit, that we know that Martin Luther King Jr. drew upon this longing where he fought tirelessly for radical re reformity. And we can see change. We're seeing change in our world. We're seeing change in our life. We're seeing change in, in we're seeing revival amongst Christians today. We're seeing glimpses of that hope. And we need to, you know, you know, be with be in that because God is doing a new work. He's building a new thing. And we need to have hope that He will bring it to completion. We will bring the church together. He will bring unity in the faith. He will bring one body to to one state to serve one God in the name of Jesus. There won't be several different denominations in the new heaven. There will be one body. There will be one church. There will be one denomination and there'll be one God. Hallelujah. All oh, glory to God. Nadia, over to you. <laughs> Holy Spirit fire. <laughs> um, God, it actually adds on to what you've just said, what I wanted to bring up, because if we go back a little bit to 21 um 25 it says a bit before that as well about there there'll be no night and it says that again so it's obviously important that we take note of that and um, what it brought to me is obviously like god is our light right jesus came and he was the light well he dwells within us and so in this world there's that darkness so obviously we're here to shine jesus's light into this world now and then when we come to heaven 
we'll just be flooded with with goodness because you know hell is a separation of anything good god is only good so um yeah i just wanted to kind of point out that that light that he, it says in um 22 5 and night will be no more there's not going to be any more evil because there's a separation from us from evil rather than now a separation from god and light and um we'll need no light of a lamp or sun because god's light will be our light forever amen yeah wow very powerful very powerful thank you nadia and I'll just link as well with something else that came to me. I don't know where it is. It's in Matthew. But Jesus said, I go to prepare a mansion for you. And if it was not so, I would not say it. Amen. So, again, just to add to that hope, like we're going to get mansions. <laughs> and I'm happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. And, and, and you know, in, in go, going back into either, you, there, there will be a new work. They'll be in, in this new world because, you know, God, by the Bible describes work as a gift from God, you know, and this should bring comfort when our current occupations feel boring, dissatisfying. In the world to come, we will enjoy the work of our hands. We will take pride of our accomplishments and enjoy the benefits of our efforts. We will never again labor in vain. Isaiah's vision includes a reference to this world which was originally created that God called a young world very good in Genesis, Genesis 1.31. Work in that world was also very good. And John 5.17, his new world, God will restore work to its original purpose. And in the meantime, we will serve as God's co-workers. We use the abilities and the resources he has given us to, to use wisely to manage this earth and meet people's needs. And we need to anticipate our future with God by journeying in, sojourning is the word, by journeying in with him through life and learning what he has in store for us you know the bible has a plan for each and every single one of us and it's and it's up to us to cultivate it right here on earth because we're talking in, in revelations past present and future so you can see how, how quickly we're talking about future back into past back into present so isaiah past present now future you know so when we look at revelations we must be thinking past present future past present future Gemma, Gemma, over to you. Yeah, it just reminded me of that scripture again in Matthew where it says, um, can you get into bed, please? Yeah. Where it says, um, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Again, in Matthew. And it says, like, obviously here in Isaiah, Old Testament, see, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. And so, like, even today, like, we still pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So if that, it's like, I just feel like he's speaking. He's not speaking to the church as a whole. He's speaking to us as individual members. Do you know what I mean? He really wants us to connect with the change and the restoration and um working on ourselves and and then from that we will be creating through his work we will be creating a more heavenly earth mm -hmm. and um then that's when his will can be done but again like there's so much division within the body of Christ and the enemy just loves the division doesn't he and it's um it's tough when we apply these scriptures to ourselves rather than saying oh this is what everyone should be doing if we just focus on what we should be doing then it really it makes it so much more simple because I'm so quick to be like, oh, my God, all these people, they're not doing this. And it's like, what? Jeff, that links into the scripture about um, the speck in, you know, back to what we yeah. said, before, the speck in your brother's eye, but you've got a log in your own. Amen. And it all comes down to 
watching ourselves, doesn't it? Being watchful, being mindful, praying for ourselves. Like it's all good praying for other people, but like what are we going through? Well, how are we acting? What are we doing? Amen. Like we're never gonna create a peaceful environment if we're praying for everyone, but we're just acting like crazy lunatics. Like it it doesn't it doesn't work, does it? <laughs> <laughs> so it's really true that's really true because when we look at that uh the messianic prophecy in isaiah the sixth of verse 65 18 focuses on the joy and rejoicing so that's what we should be doing it's giving us a glimpse of what we should be doing we should be the bible says we need to count it all joy and we should be rejoicing at who we have in us the power of the Holy Spirit, not worrying about, you know, um, uh, like the, the, you know, the, the person next door, or, you know, um, or what that church is doing. We should be worrying about what Christ is doing. Our eyes should be fixed on Christ. It says an end to weeping and crying, 65, 19. You know, there is going to be no more pain. You know, we need to be owning, planting, enjoying the fruits of the vineyards here on earth, as well as. Uh, a past tense future so it, there will be an end to, to to laboring in vain and or or bringing children into the world so there won't be no more labor there won't be no more babies being born there won't be no more groaning no more pregnancies there won't be none of that either hallelujah <laughs> no more no more no more pain you know it's gone it's finished you know the the, the, the curse is done you know, right the way back then, you know, you're going to have you, you you're going to have children and you men, you're going to work. You know, that was that's what was set out. You're going to you're, you're going to have to labor for your wives and your children uh, as you men and you women. You're going to have to have children done, finished <laughs> right there back in Genesis. We see these pictures from Revelation. It really reminds us of God's original design for his handiwork and his creation, managing the world's resources, that one day he will restore an ideal world. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Okay, Mark, um, over to you, brother. Let's 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 move on. Verses nine to uh, verses um six to twelve. King James, the time is near, verse six. Then he said to me, These words are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angels to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. Jesus said, Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Now I, John, saw and heard these things. And when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Then he said to me, See that you do not do that for i am your fellow servant and of your brethren and prophets and of those who keep the words of this book worship god and he said to me do not steal the words of the prophecy of this book for the time is at hand he who is untrust let him be unjust still he who is filthy let him be filthy still he who is righteous let him be righteous still he who is holy, let him be holy still. Deep, 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 deep. He says, I'm coming quickly. You know, there's a command in, there's a command in that. Blessed is he who keeps the word of the prophecy of this book. He says, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed me these things. And it just goes to show again, you know, the angel tells him straight, you know, don't come down and worship me. I'm just a servant, just like you. You know, worship the Lord your God. You know, so again, there's a magnifying area there. We've got to be careful who we're worshiping. You know, <laughs> you know, it's showing us there in scripture, you know, and that's idols. We've got to be careful, you know, when we're worshiping idols, your money, your job, your power, your prestige, your all, all that gear, your, your, your money, none of, these places, none of these things you can take with you, right? So, let, you know, God is showing us here, right? You know, we've got to be careful what we put before the Lord our God, yeah? Anything that you're putting before the Lord our God is basically showing you, hey, look, be careful. 
be careful, be careful. And he's also showing you, he's saying, do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for time is hand. So time is near. He's warning us again. He who is unjust, let him be unjust. Yeah, none of your business. I'll deal with that. You crack on and doing your own, work out your own sanctification with trembling and fear. The Bible tells us quite clear. He who is filthy, let him be filthy. Let him carry on. You worry about doing your bit. Yeah, he he who is righteous, let him be righteous. You know, so there's the good, there's the you know, he's he's saying, you know, we all have a choice. You know, that's what he's that's what this scripture is saying it saying there. Still, he who is holy, let him be holy. You know, very, very powerful. John, come in. John, you're muted. Yeah, I've just got a question about false idols because I understand it, you know, about about money, about drugs, about work, about all of those sort of objects. Um, but what about a person, you know, like a partner? Can can a, can a partner be a false idol? You know, going back to what we were talking about a bit earlier. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. Even, I can't even put my listen. I can't even put my wife before God. There's an order of the realm, man. God, man, yeah. woman, children. Yeah. It's not wife, God. It's not yeah. children, God. The Bible tells us clearly, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with trembling and fear. We've got to put God first. And a lot of mums can easily do that. They can put their kids before their husband and also before God because... They sort of become like an idol in a sense. So you have to be really careful. Really careful. I've had some, my, one of my friends really struggled with that because God actually gave her a miraculous child. And she said, like, I really struggle with how do I put God first? And what God show, showed me when I had that issue with my children is I gave you those children. Without me, you wouldn't have those children. So put me first. And same with a, you know, a wife any anyone a friend god's given us who he's given us into our lives and it's only because of him we have any blessings because we don't deserve anything amen keep the words keep the words it says in 22 7 keep the words faith fully obeys god's okay. true revelation that's you know yeah. deuteronomy 28 tells us you know, yes. it talks about the curses. It talks about even women selling their children over to the beasts. It tells us, you know, it's a fantastic scripture. And, it, you know, it does it does explain a lot. Amen. Amen. What verse is that, right? Is that Ryan? Sorry. It is, yes. Uh, if you go to, um, you know, I don't, I, even me, I don't know. Like, I don't know that. Deuteronomy 28, go through that, sister, and just go through the whole lot of that scroll there. Oh, thank you. Neil, come in. Thanks, Arba. Um, Yeah, my thoughts also is is that well, I I think it's easier said than done in principle to, I don't have children, but I would imagine it'd be very difficult to put God, um, uh, children, um, God above children and even parents sometimes. But if we, if I look at it from the standpoint of, well, nobody loved like Jesus loved. So if my heart posture is to love Jesus and put Jesus first and make Jesus the, the ultimate cornerstone of my life, then if I love Jesus the way Jesus loves me, then I can then share that love with my children and with others. And then also, if I'm accountable to God and put God first before a partner, then my partner can rest assured that I'm going to be absolutely faithful because I'm accountable yeah. and all of this kind of stuff. So... It's like by putting God first, it's actually a gift to others um, because we can then um, be the image of Jesus as best possible to other people in our lives. Amen. Amen. And just on top of that as well, Neil, like our children are going to grow up and leave us. Our partners, our husbands, our wives cannot be there for us all the time, but Jesus can be. Your fellow prophets, your fellow prophets. Um, 
so when we look at Ignatius, this circle of, of Christian prophets, John, all the big names that we've seen in the Bible, uh, faithful believers with the prophetic spirit, you know, um, and we saw in Numbers 11, 29, Acts 2, 7, worship God, worship God in revelation and exhortation. You know, we have to put God first. Without God, I've got nothing. The bottom line, I've got no marriage. I've got no children. I've got nothing. And if, 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 you know, as soon as I take my will back, as soon as I take the reins back, I see when I'm going down that road. Do you know what I mean? It's really, really, you know, that fine line. You know, if we fix our eyes on Jesus, then there is no fear. Gemma. I like it when he says, I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard them, heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel um, who had been showing them to me. And it just got me thinking about all the people that do hear from God or hear the word of God. And they don't they don't accept it or they don't receive it. And even then, even though he is receiving it, the the angel says, "Don't do that. I'm a fe I'm a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophets and with me, who all keep the words of the scroll. Worship God." But it just got like my heart just fell for the people that hear it, but they don't receive it. Yeah, it's true, and and it's twenty two eleven summarizes that. You know, it, it you know it gives us that harsh reality of the ethical alternatives. What happens to the face view of Jesus' imminent return? You know, yeah. Then it goes on to say, <laughs> "Let the ones who do wrong continue to do wrong," and it's like. Oh, we just want to save these people and tell them like what you're doing you it's not good, but it tells us very clearly like just let them continue doing wrong, let the vile person continue to be vile, and let the one who does not right continue to do right, and let the holy person continue to be holy, basically, mind your own business what other people are doing and that's hard. <laughs> it, it, it also like, says, it also, sorry, darling, it also says, let the faithful continue responding positively. That means do not stop preaching the truth. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to say. The bottom there's, line. There's a scripture, isn't there, about, um, you know, feet of peace and, do and dust dust your feet off you know dust dust it if they're not going to receive it so it's not that we don't share we share the truth in love but if they're not willing to receive it don't lose your peace amen. over that amen yeah. amen that's very important don't just amen. keep preaching amen. the truth don't lose your peace because the, the other the, 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 the you, you, you know the, the other thing is you they will try and draw you out so that they go see yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you have to get to a point where you know what? Maybe this one ain't for you. That's for somebody else. Move on. And God will keep telling. Like I've got this with my ex, and Michelle's seen my whole journey with my ex, so she will know this um, very well. But even now, He will constantly try to get me out of my peace, and God will keep testing me in that area over and mm -hmm. over and over. And I'm at now at a point where I see it. And I'm not taken out of my peace, but that's taken three years, <laughs> nearly. Gemma's mum used to do that to me, do you know what I mean? About four years ago, she'd done me and it, and it smashed me to pieces. <laughs> she went, see? <laughs> kept, me mouth shut for about, kept me mouth shut for about two years and I went, what? She's getting it. And she went, see? <laughs> and that was it. I was mesmerized because i knew i got drawn out failed miserably remember yeah. listen you know god will test us yeah? yeah think about abraham abraham was tested god will test the believer to see if we you're ready develop our fruit right and how does he develop our fruit unless we're aware of it unless mm -hmm. we're aware of the darkness brought to light right 
Amen. We can't do it. We can't let him, we can't surrender it to him unless we're aware it's even there. Amen. Amen. We see that John confirmed the trustworthiness of the revelation. He said, and will become, and, and the, 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 it says, come to pass the climax of all who will be coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, the interpreting angel reminds John of the truthfulness of all that's been presented. These things will come to pass, the climax of of all who will be coming. That special blessing is pronounced on each one who keeps the word of this prophecy. Do you know what I mean? John confirms the, 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 the trustworthiness of the revelation. When he heard all these things, he fell down to worship the angel. John was not to seal the prophecy, for the time of the fulfillment was near, but how much nearer is it today? You know, this Jesus is coming. Is it going to be another thousand years? Is it going to be another 10 days? Nobody knows the hour. <laughs> Nobody knows <laughs> when that time was. So if you get a prophet or, or ministry is telling you they're, they're lying, the Bible tells you quite clearly. Nobody Amen. knows the time. Nobody knows the day. Nobody knows the hour. Nobody knows when. <laughs> so there ain't no prophecy that can tell you that. So if they do, you know straight away that stay well clear. It says, it says the fulfillment ev evil doers will be fixed in their impenitence. The filthy will have no further chance to change after the Lord returns. Mm. But the righteous will continue to do right. And the holy will be holy still. The Lord announces that he's coming soon with that repayment to everyone for what he has done. Why? Because he is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. <laughs> the same one who created will close the curtains on the stage of time. Mm. Okay, let's go into that. Um, somebody want to read Revelations 22, verse 12, Jesus testifying to the churches. Verse um, Verse 12 to verse 17, please. I'll read. Far away. Look, I'm coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what, what they have done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed is those who wash their robes that they have, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city outside are the dogs those who practice practice magic arts the sexually immoral the murderers the idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood mm -hmm. no stay where you are next i think that's important blessed yeah. are those who do his commands <laughs> mm -hmm. let's not let's not let, let, let's not i've been saved by grace i can do what i want yeah, there ain't none of that preaching in this scripture then. If you love me, you keep my commandments. <laughs> right. It says, look quite clearly, that they may have the right to the tree of life and they may enter through the gates into the city. Those that do his commands may, right? There's no certainty here, right? Let's let's get it right. So everyone that's going, yeah, yeah. If you confess with your mouth and believe you are Jesus, Lord, you're going well. Yeah, what well, I'm, I'm, I'm relying on what the Spirit's going to tell me. Here, do you know what I mean? Not what somebody else is going to tell me. It says may enter, quite clearly in my Bible. It also says those who will be outside the city, those sorcerers, mm. those outside the dogs. It says the sexual immoral the murderers, the idolaters, whoever loves and practice the lie, the witchcraft, the fornicators, the, the, the ones that heard the gospel and rejected it. Very, very uh, clear. Can I ask you a question on this? On. It's something that someone asked me the other day. Say if someone's got a doctrine that's just a bit skew mm -hmm. would they make? would that be salvational? Obviously, it depends on the doctrine. I'm not talking about who Jesus is, but something like a smaller doctrine. Give me an example. 
the example would be the trin like the Trinity. Right. Okay. So yeah. the Trinity, would that I be so that. I hear that. I hear that. Well, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised, you know, when we get to heaven. I think we're going to be pleasantly surprised. Even people talk about, you know, different people to different churches. I think we're going to be pleasantly surprised because the Bible truly, it's only God that looks at hearts, what's in the man's heart. And if somebody, you know, is been deceived or whatever, in, or has a misbelief, but he's speaking the lord right if they've got a bit of a because we're human right we're all going to have some misunderstanding of the lord as long to me like what is salvation was who is jesus Amen. because jesus keeps asking his apostles all the way through who do you say i oh, am yeah. correct so for me that's salvational amen yeah but then there's other doctrines that aren't well this is my understanding to correct me if i'm wrong that aren't salvational hmm. that we really need to let go <laughs> hmm. And 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 it's it's you know, you know it's not for us to interpret. There's only one person that can judge them. Yeah. <laughs> Again, <laughs> correct in lovingly, right? To your it, understanding, but I could be I could be wrong because I. Um, it clearly talks about the seven churches will be judged. Yeah. So that doctrine will be judged to a certain degree, but I don't think I, I, the scripture that comes to mind is those who are preaching are going to be judged more harshly than the yeah. others. And the yeah. scripture clearly defies that. He says, if you're a pastor or a teacher, you're going to be judged harshly than the person. So yeah. we need to take analogy around the teaching, not the receiver of the teaching. Yes. Yeah. Clearly, and it's the heart behind it, isn't it? If you're purposely deceived and deceiving others, there's the issue. But if you genuinely think that that is your, if that's your understanding right then, and you're teaching it, well, I don't. Surely there, there's some sort of grace for that because it's like you're, you're misunderstanding it. It's not that you're doing it out of malice or wanting to lead others astray, right? It's very true. Let's know. I mean, let's look at that. The Holy Spirit and just pray for discernment all the time, though. Well, many people think re re religion offers nothing but judgment, but Jesus came not to condemn, yeah. but to save. Yeah. His purpose was to offer life to dying humanity, inviting us to experience forgiveness, healing, and hope. That's really what verse 22 17 is saying. He's inviting us now to receive forgiveness yeah. healing and hope he says come he says come he says to those who are thirsty whoever desires let him take the water of life freely so you know who's to say that person that's maybe skewed off with a doctrine do you know what i mean our heart's been in it do you know what i mean hasn't been discipled but being fixed maybe on the who's, who's to say that person's not drinking Gemma, over to you. Um, so apparently, apparently, I don't know what is true sometimes, but apparently the Trinity isn't actually a biblical doctrine and it's a pagan doctrine that was um bought from the Roman Catholic Church under the influence of the first 300 years of Christianity. I think the word Trinity definitely, like, it's obviously people will argue it's not a biblical word, and I think that, see, no. I've I've prayed on this hard with the Lord, and I've sought him because of, obviously, teachings I'm getting, and God has shown me clearly he is three persons. So I'm going to go for what God show me, but it's... Apparently, he's like he's this he's not equal to god he's subordinate who jesus, jesus. yeah what in the trinity yeah no that's not right no, it, it, the scripture it, clearly shows that he is the same he's equal to yeah god. i i i personally believe in the trinity but this is their argument um first, yeah, of, first, first, first of all yeah. there is there is the, the, the word trinity is not in the canon of the bible but neither is on this but it does we got we got we got loads of hands up there nadia we got the uh, we got the holy spirit we got god and we got jesus so that's clear the triune yeah. so right but the word trinity yeah. is nowhere written in the bible 
Yeah, correct. In, in the canon. So we've got to work, we've got to work on the canon, number one, right? So we know that God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's clear. Mm -hmm. Triune. Do you know what I mean? That's that's very, very clear. So Trinity is not a word in the Bible, but we can see three spirits, persons, beings. Yeah. Right there. Right there. Yeah. And it's clear as well when you start looking to Greek, they're different persons. Clear as day. Yeah. And 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 um, but we also have uh, also have to understand Jesus did nothing without the Father's consent. Yeah. Number one. And ha and where he left, he said, I'm going to leave you my spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, for us today. He so, emptied himself, didn't he? That's why, because he emptied himself he so emptied that he to, to so well. yeah. yeah, that's that's just true. Mark, let's go. To, Mark, you're next. Yeah, I was just um, I was just saying about see that doctrine thing in regards to like teaching, obviously teachers. Who are preaching the gospel and stuff being um judged more harshly but do, do you believe that would come down to um so like people being judged in accordance to their understanding of 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 of, of the word or do you know what I mean like do you know what I'm saying like what do you mean <laughs> like like people for example that have never had the gospel preached to them yeah were they going to be judged less harshly than someone who has had the doc has has had the gospel preached to him and reject the, the gospel? Is someone going to be judged more harshly that understands correct doctrine? However, they manipulate the doctrine in order for their own their own ulterior motive. Like, would you? Yeah, do you get it? Like, there must be levels on 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 that on how. So, how, so how, how, if you well. if you if you become a pastor, yeah, and. Mm -hmm you're preaching and you're twisting the word of God for your own benefit, you're going to be judged harshly for that. You know, people talk about prosperity preaching today. They're going to be judged harshly for that, right? So, you know, if you're using the gospel for your own personal gain and not to promote the glory of God, you're going to be judged harshly for that. It's as simple as that, you know, and the thing is, it's not about your knowledge or whatever it is. You know, we've all got to, you know, um, delve in our relationship with Jesus ourselves. Do you know what I mean? And I, and I think it's about if we're honest and true to ourselves, we will know, you know, when we're manipulating the word of God, when we're using it to our own personal benefit or personal gain. Do you know what I mean? It don't take rocket science. And if we're not repenting whilst we're doing these things, we're going to get judged harshly. <laughs> you know, they, these are true facts. You know, I don't think it, you, it, we can't answer what God's going to do. But what we do know is every single one of us is going to have to give an account. Every single one of us, you know, and it's, and it's important to understand, you know, um, that's what's going to happen. That's what the Bible says. It's the truth. We're all going to have to give an account of ourselves and our lives. Who was next? Neil. Next, Neil. Yeah, bear with me, please. Um, let me just find it. Where's it gone? Um, here it is. <clears throat> Galatians 1 8 NIV. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. Amen. <clears throat> Everyone will get to the, yeah, that is if we get to the judgment seat. That's a good point. Some might just go straight to hell. Gemma? Yeah, I just wanted to say also, but it then basically in the chapter, in the bit that we just read, it says, look, I am coming soon. My reward is me and I will give each person according to what they've done. I am the Alpha and the Amigo, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. So he clearly shows, Jesus clearly shows us, that's in red, that he was there from the beginning. Do you know what I mean? When... We're in Genesis. So for anyone that's like doesn't believe in the Trinity, it there, there's so many like 
there's so he says he's from the beginning it doesn't he so even though he wasn't even alive then like he wasn't even born I so, am so like, how can you not believe it like i don't understand there's so many scriptures that back it up but apparently not a true doctrine so yeah. it's like oneness so like god is just one and there's no like they're 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 free. I don't know. I can't even explain it because it doesn't make sense to me. But um, yeah. <laughs> They've always got it. Abraham knew it himself. What's that, Ron? Abraham knew it himself. Abraham. Uh, Abraham knew it himself. Easy, Jaron, coming in. <laughs> we're waking up. We're waking up. We're waking up now, Jaron. What's happening? <laughs> How you doing? Well, good to see you, brother. Trinity, um, so I've been in for the last month. Um, but Trinity itself it isn't in the Bible at all. I know that the concept of it is. Um, when I look at the Bible, especially in John, it just talks purely about God or Jesus being God, and they are the same person in a sense. I got explains uh, this way to explain God. Um, being three beings in one was a bit like a family. So Adam and Eve, for example, they became one, one flesh, but they were two different people, but they were still two beings coming together as one. And then they had a child. I think that's what God is seeing the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as, as three beings in one. It's different people, but technically the same. Does that make sense? Uh, that links in as well to like um, the word Elohim, which basically is plural, and it means more than one being, in God. So, and, yeah. so so hold on a minute. So listen, no one here can fully understand oh, God, God, number one. Oh. Right? So if we're trying to interpret and fully understand God, then you, you've lost that, that battle before you even begin. we're all all coming with different (laughs) concepts in a sense but all the same like we're all interpreting it (laughs) in a different type of way let's be very clear the father the son and the holy spirit are unique it's biblical and distinct why is it distinct because the bible speaks of the father as god Philippians 1, 2, Jesus as God, Titus 12, 2, 13, and the Holy Spirit as God, Acts 5, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, boom, 1. Right? (laughs) So the scripture, you have to go by what the scripture says, not what that church says or what that doctrine says. Go by what the scripture says. The Bible speaks as the Father as God of God, Philippians 1 2, Jesus as God, Titus 2 13, and the Holy Spirit as God, Acts 5 3 4. These are, are, are they three different ways of looking at God? Of course they are. Are they three different meanings? Are they three different roles? They go by the scripture. We know that Jesus, we know that Jesus, Jesus didn't do nothing without the Father, number one unique boom <laughs> you know we know that the holy spirit do you know what i mean when he asked he, 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 the holy spirit was w- was with him the holy spirit came down and descended upon him shum right from heaven right into empower his ministry boom right do you know what i mean god sent the holy spirit upon his son unity of the spirit one there here you go bang right you know so it's powerful stuff you know, for us to interpret that ourselves and try and you know say this is what it is, but what is clear is God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, and Jesus. Do you know what I mean? The center, the one that that, that 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 brings it all. You know, he died on the cross for us so that we could have his spirit in us mm. and have this eternal life. You know, let's look at the mechanics. You know, the spirit, he says, I'm going to leave you my helper to help you, to guide you, to lead you, to deliver you. You know, he came to give us his spirit in us. You know, sometimes we can get too caught up on the doctrine and not the mechanics. 
And it's important that he says he came right now, you know, so that we, the whoever desires, let him take that water of life freely. Verse 17. So let's go on to verse 18, because there's a warning in that. And someone takes it from verse 18 right the way through to the end, please. Can I just say something before you move on? Of course you can. Because I just think it's just really powerful because it just breaks the whole trinity basically down in the next few verses because it says, verse 16, I, Jesus, verse 17, the spirit, and then it goes on on 18 to say God will add that person, add to that person. So just in them three verses at the end of the chapter Amen. It, it mentions all three of them it all doesn't three of them. Like, oh well god done. said this or uh, and, it, and jesus speaks personally about oh, jesus himself i Amen. jesus and then the spirit and then god so and then, then this will be coming soon but yeah whoever's That's reading powerful. absolutely right there in front of us no one jump Go on, Gemma. <laughs> Go on, Gemma. I'm who's alive reading? tonight. <laughs> who's reading? Who's reading? Who's reading? Who's reading? I'll read it. I warn take, it, take it from verse 16, then. Verse 16. Uh, Jesus said, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the There's offspring of David. There's an echo in there. What's that echo in the background? Oh. Uh -huh. So I'll start again. Oh, it's, yeah, it's too big, too big, too, too big a scripture to be echoing, man. Coming again. Right. Uh, verse 16. Can you hear me? Yeah, hey, yes, loud right. and clear. I've sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and the morning star, and the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him who hears say, come. And let him who first come. Whoever decide, desires, let him take the water of life freely. And warn him, for I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of this book, of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life from the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So carry on. Yeah, all the way, all the way, bro. Um, I am coming quickly. He who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Amen. We're going back to that question earlier on. If men are told right now preachers are told churches are told if you add anything to this written word <laughs> in this book of revelation then god will add to the plagues that are described in it it talks about the subjects in this book which are woven throughout the bible the verse in effect condemns anything adding to the Bible. A similar judgment is pronounced on those who take away from the prophecy. Say, oh, it don't mean that. Or, you know, it's not, but we're saying the Trinity it don't mean the Trinity. It ain't God the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's like saying, just, one word doesn't mean it ain't God the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit. Right. Just because it says doesn't say the Trinity in the Bible doesn't make up the fact that the Bible clearly describes God, the Father and the Holy Spirit. It says the solemn statements do not refer to minor errors. So if you make a minor error, that's fine. A minor error of the interpretation, but rather an outright attack on the inspiration or the completeness of the book where you go around like. Jehovah Witness and say that doesn't mean specifically that doesn't mean that or when you when you start omitting like the the, the old Masonic book you know that that Jesus was resurrected from the dead you start taking things away you know that 
here is clearly telling you, right? Yeah, listen, if you've been mistaught, that's fine. But if you start believing and you start actually saying that and you start you know, putting that on people, like, what, what does that mean? So man of truth comes to start telling you the truth and you go, actually, no, 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 no. That's omitted from that. It's the warning. It's a warning to the churches. It's a warning to denominations. It's a warning right here. Right? It's, it's, because we can't all be saying we're, we're Christians and we're not all preaching the truth. Number one, the book closes with a promise and a blessing. You know, uh, you, you, you know, a blessing to, 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 to the promise that the Lord Jesus is coming quickly. And that every redeemed heart can respond. Even so, the Lord Jesus, he's the blessing to us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is to be with you all. A peaceful close to a book filled with the thunders and lightning of divine judgment. The Bible ends with, with, with stress on some subline and some familiar truths. It emphasizes the lordship of our lord jesus christ and at the end of the book at the end of the history he stands supreme it underlines the final separation of good and evil that god's creation is that final picture it stands cleansed it stands perfect it stands undefiled by the evils which have marred its beauty throughout history it reasserts the open invitation to accept in faith the grace of god and know his salvation that the last words of the bible seem to single out the emphasis the thought that all may come and that whoever believes on him remember it doesn't matter whoever believes on him shall not perish <laughs> but have a less have a lasting life yeah whoever believes on him i believe i believe that could be from any denomination as an individual if you believe that Christ is Lord, do you know what I mean? Even if you was mistaken, it's, it does be, it does say be warned for many are perishing because of lack of knowledge. It, it warns about that in the scripture. But the Bible says if you believe on him, <laughs> that you shall not perish and you shall have an everlasting life. It stresses, it expresses the second coming of Christ, ever eminent, ever to be waited in expectancy by the people of God. Gemma, over to you. Yeah, I just, re I also, going back again, it says the spirit and the bride say come. So obviously, when it's speaking about the bride, it's speaking about us being the church, like obviously not the church building. We're talking about us personally as individuals. And just it's, this is the importance of evangelism, isn't it? It's like when we have the spirit, then that's when um, we extend that invitation for the world to come to Jesus rather than like, just going to church on a Sunday, going through the motions, da, 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 like churches that don't do evangelism, that don't reach out to the lost, that da, 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 or even the individual that doesn't do it, the importance of it. And then obviously it goes on to speak about the living water again. And like even in the world, the living water is such a, a, a main resource that we need isn't it to to survive so obviously and then it brings the healing the love the freedom refreshment and the newness of life but I just want to also read the last bit that it says for verse 21 and it says revelation um revelation closes human history as genesis opened it in a place of paradise but notice one distinct difference in revelation Evil is gone forever. Genesis described Adam and Eve walking and talking with God. Revelation describes people worshipping God face to face with God. Revelation describes people worshiping, oh, worshiping 
God face to face. Genesis describes a garden with an evil serpent. Revelation describes a perfect city with no evil. The Garden of Eden was destroyed by sin. But God recreates paradise in the new Jerusalem. The book of Revelation ends with an urgent plea. Come, Lord Jesus, in the world of problems, persecution, evil and immorality. Christ calls us to endure in our faith. Our efforts to better the world are important, but their results cannot compare with the transformation that Jesus will bring um, about when he returns he alone controls human history forgiveness of sins and will recreate the earth and bring lasting peace revelation is above all a message of hope it shows no matter what happens on earth god remains in control it promises that evil will not last forever and it dis um, despicts the wonderful reward that awaits all who believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. And it's just, um, a, I think it's a beautiful ending because we started on like a real traumatic experience starting the book, didn't we? It was like, ah, shall we quit? Shall we move on to something else? Um, we don't want to read this like halfway through it was very traumatic and um we just end with hope don't we Amen. <laughs> Nadia you meet it you meet it Sorry, so just to add to what Gemma's just shared, like people say, so why did God allow sin in the first place? And I think we can see clearly through this last bit of scripture, like we will know through experience that sin is nowhere near as good as God. And it's like we had to go through that through experience. Like it's like consequences, like, like a parent, right? We'll have a choice. And if we make the wrong choice, we learn through the consequence. But then we'll know through the consequence that the right way is the best way. Amen. And that's why God allowed it. Because we will never choose sin again. Amen. 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 Let's go to Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Turn our Bible um, Psalm 51, please, guys. Yeah, oh, Lord. Hold on a minute. Hold Is that, have, mercy, have mercy on me, O Lord, that one. Oh, Psalm 51, yes. Have mercy on me, Lord, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me of my sins for my transgressions. That's the sinner's, that's the sinner's oh. prayer in Psalms. It's a prayer oh, of repentance. Lord. Okay, so are we all there? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's 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 um um let's do this corporately. Okay, unmute your mics, unmute your Bibles. Which psalm was it? We psalm fifty-one. Thank you. That's beautiful. Psalm fifty-one. Okay, we there? Everybody there? No, not yet. Yeah. Psalm fifty-one. Raise your hand if you're there. I'm there. Okay, brilliant. We ready? Yeah. I okay. don't know. Sorry, just one minute, please. One minute. One fifty one. No. eBay. <laughs> Go away. You there? Give me no, we almost have <laughs> I clicked on it, so we through to eBay, they're trying to sell it. Go away, eBay. <laughs> uh let's have a look. Here we go. It's beautiful. Yeah, I'm there, I'm there. Let's go. Have mercy, Have upon, mercy me. upon me, O oh God. Oh God. According, according to your loving kindness. Loving kindness according, according to the multitude of your tender, tender mercies. mercies. Lot out my transgressions. My transgressions. Wash, Wash me through my iniquity. my iniquity. Cleanse me cleanse from, my, from sins. my sins. For I acknowledge my transgressions. My transgressions and my and sin, sin is always, is always before, before me. me. Against, against you, you, you only you have, I, have sinned I sinned and done this and evil, evil in, your sight, in your sight, that you may be found, may be found just, just when, when you speak, speak and, blameless and blameless when you judge. When you judge. 
Behold, Behold, I was brought, I was brought, brought in inequity, inequity. And, in and in sin, my, my mother sin, conceived me. Behold, Behold, you desire you truth, desire truth in, in the inward, inward part, parts. and in the hidden, in the part, hidden part, you will you make me, me known, known wisdom. wisdom. Purge me, Purge with, me hyssop, with hyssop, and I and shall, I be, shall clean. be clean. Wash me, Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Than snow. Make, Make me hear joy, joy and, gladness, and gladness, that the bones, that the bones you have broken, you have broken may, rejoice. may rejoice. Hide your Hide face, your from, face my from, from my sin, blot out my iniquity, blot out all iniquities. create in me a clean, me heart, a clean heart, heart, of God. heart of God, and renew a steadfast, a steadfast spirit, within, spirit me. within me. Do not cast me away, cast from, your me away from your presence, do not take do not away take your, your Holy Spirit, spirit from me. me. Restore, Restore me the joy, me of, the your joy of your salvation. And uphold me your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressions, transgressions your, ways. your ways. And sinners and shall, be converted, shall be converted to you. To you. Deliver me from the guilt, from of, the bloodshed, guilt of bloodshed, O oh God. The God of my God salvation. Of my, salvation and my tongue and my shall sing aloud, sing aloud your, righteousness. Of your righteousness. O Lord, open, o Lord my lips. open my lips. And my mouth, my mouth shall show forth your praises. praises. For you, For do, you not do not desire sacrifice, sacrifice or else, or else I, will give it. I will give it. You do not delight, do in, not burnt delight in burnt offering. The sacrifice of God, a broken spirit, and a broken and contrite heart. heart. These, O oh God, These you, are will God not you will not despise. Do good in your good, good, in your good pleasure to Zion. Build the walls of Jerusalem, the walls of Jerusalem. And, you and you shall be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings, and they shall offer balls in your altar. In Jesus, they shall Lord, offer balls on your altar. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God keep you. Amen. God continue to shine his face and be blessed. And look forward to seeing you all bright and early Wednesday morning at 6.30 a.m. God bless you, Lord. Thank you. God bless everyone. Amen. 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 We shall see you next week. And we shall see what book we are with next week. Look out. Hallelujah for the flyer. Invite a friend, come on board. May God bless you all. Thank Amen. you, Nadia. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you, Zoe's friend. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Maxine. Thank you, Jaron. Thank you, Gemma. Thank you, everybody. Jonathan, God bless you all. God bless you. Keep you, Neil. May God continue to shine his face upon you. Let the anointed flow. Look at that lovely, beautiful child there. Pray a blessing on her. What's her name again? Lila. Lila. May God bless you. Aww. May God keep you. May God continue to shine his face upon you and give you his peace, little one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 May the blessing of the Lord and your family be upon you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord your God. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you. Bless Mark, I call you. Uh, Neil, I call you. John, I call you. God, I'll speak to all of you soon.